Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I will be showing you how to take headlights like this and make them something more like this. Beautiful, crystal clear, highest quality. Now let's get down to business. Starting off here with my P500 gold disc. This is the abrasive one. Not as abrasive as some, but it's a good uh, starting point. It's the best that I have found. Um, if you go too less, if you go um, higher, uh, it changes things. If you go less, it's going to be too abrasive. If you start with a too abrasive pad, um, you just have way more things to uh, clear up, way more blemishes to clear up and to get rid of. You're making yourself work too hard uh, because the more abrasive the sandpaper, the more divots and swirls and things like that you would leave into the headlight, which means you have to clean them up more before you more work to achieve the clarity that you want uh, to get all those swirls and divots away. So 500 is a great starting point. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, all 500 discs are not the same. Uh, you pretty much get what you pay for. If you cut corners, you're going to have a disc that's going to fall apart a uh, corner of this light here. Um, this is a huge light. This is from a Honda Fit. Uh, the small cars, in my experience, you generally have larger lights than the big cars. Um, this is a ginormous light, uh, probably about the size of an Escalade light. Uh, this is the second pad I'm using. Uh, this particular car has never been through headlight restoration, so there's a lot of material to remove times being such a huge light. It's literally the size of maybe two and a half regular lights. Um, so uh, having to use more pads here on this light you could um, theoretically uh, sometimes I do run the drill at a slower pace so you get a more of a grind um, you know less impact on the pad um, this takes maybe five times longer to achieve the effect uh, with me having to do this probably on uh, multiple vehicles or uh, have other uh, prior appointments for other uh, vehicle work, I try to get through the headlights most efficiently and fast as possible. Don't want to be out here all day in the sun. I uh, want to get it done, but I want to do it uh, the best of my ability. Uh, but you can slow down the drill and preserve the uh, pads but as a professional I want to use fresh material and I want it to work the way it does uh, fresh out the gate kind of like uh, you know boxers in round one I want that round one throughout my whole process I don't want to you know milk it out to round 12 tomorrow my materials are just not performing the same way that they were in the beginning just a little ideology there uh, but you see, um, this is the third one here. I believe this is the final and third uh, I'll be using on this headlight. This one is more of just hit that little corner there on the, um, the right left corner. And also just to uh, get a good measure all the way around the light with a fresh pad. If you're doing this for your own car, that's one thing. But I mean, you shouldn't want to uh, shortchange your own headlight restoration in any cause. Uh, especially if you're doing it for somebody else's car, you want to deliver the best uh, possible quality, which means using the best possible quality uh, equipment and um, supplies and using them the way they're supposed to be used uh, to best meet the best outcome. But anyway, see there, smooth, gentle strokes. Uh, you know, you're not really pushing hard on the headlight. You're pretty much using the weight of the drill. 
you can feel the sandpaper grip of the headlight um, and you can feel the resistance and the headlight and that's one of the ways you know that you have gone deep enough when you feel the resistance is not there anymore it's just running smoothly on there and you see that white powder there kicking up that's how you know in dry sanding i've had a lot of uh awesome questions lately there you go three three discs um yeah i have a lot of awesome questions lately a lot of them had to do with the dry sand method because most people or a lot of people use the wet sand method um scientifically in actuality it's really not the best um it's a very light method of sanding that you do not know where you are you don't know how deep you need to go to start with that that is you wouldn't know how deep you need to go the water clouds your vision it clouds your ability to feel the headlight to feel how deep you've gone um, uh, so it just it, you're just sanding blindly that way uh, you have to clear it off and look, and then this is primarily one of the reasons why wet sanding methods don't come out as clear as dry sanding methods. Um, that's one of the reasons, because you just don't know. If you see, you know, you just don't know where you're at. And if you see a lot of those wet sanding videos or wet sanding methods, uh, their in quality isn't as clear. Another reason is uh, you don't achieve the flash point or the um you know that you don't get the efficient grind which makes uh friction and heat and that friction and heat uh does something to these headlights um i don't know the scientific term i mean i'm not technically a scientist but um something like it <laughs> two headlights that is but um with the sandpaper it 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 provides a certain amount of friction like if i touch the sandpaper pad here it's hot or it's warm not to uh burn your hand but you could tell the heat and sometimes um you know you have to slow down or you know and pace yourself on the trigger to not overheat that pad because once the pad overheats you get uh, kind of a melting you'll see some yellow uh, residual trace that's left from the pad and that's when you know that the pad is no good no more it's overheated you need to uh, disregard it and use another pad it comes right off it's not an issue but anyways that last pad i just used was the p 800 white pad it's the same pad that i took off and put onto my little yellow gimbal here uh, my little handheld sander and you see those long smooth strokes it's very light pressure on the hand it's really finesse i'm not putting pressure on this uh you never want to put pressure on it um, especially when you see a light that has cracking or spider cracking which this light actually does there towards the top you don't want to put pressure on any times because you can crack a light you don't know who's been i know um from experience but a lot of people won't know um who's been in that light what's happened to that light if they've had accidents or if somebody else has uh, restored that light 10 times who knows you know um uh you know you don't know who's been there before what's happened when you, so when you see those cracks it's a warning sign to be gentle uh in any cause you should be gentle with the headlight um you don't want to be muscling it up or putting too much pressure in any kind of way see that smoothness you can almost see it and you can definitely feel it when you're using that hand sander too uh, how smooth and wonderful that light feels right now that's what you're looking for and you see those lines that go back and forth those lines are easy to mask and easy to delete with this step which is the trizac pad the um, p excuse me 3000 grit pad uh it's a magic pad it it, it polishes and sands at the same time i uh, use it here with just regular tap water uh, you can get fancy use distilled water that would be the best uh, just for the clarity and purity um, uh, but it's highly unnecessary it's like going from one to 1 1.2 in um you know importance it's not uh it's irrelevant so just tap water here and smooth sanding with the p3000 you know you want to overlap just like when you're waxing a car or polishing a car or doing anything like that overlap uh with your sanding what you're polishing you always want to overlap um i actually do a lot more than headlight restoration headlight restoration is my primary function uh do all kind of things that i incorporate uh the same techniques uh kind of intermingle 
uh, waxing and polishing a car, um, swirl delete, these things all kind to uh, tend to uh, mix together or are cross applicable. And you see how it's kind of milky looking? That's because if you ever notice on my headlight restorations at this point, I don't wipe off all that dust that's on the light. I spray it off, but I leave a little bit on because it helps with the polishing sanding aspect of this pad. It's a little, uh, little thing that makes a big difference. Uh, if I were to spray that off and wipe it down before I started the step, I wouldn't achieve a level of clarity that I was looking for from this step. Okay, so right here is just a regular Windex. This is industrial Windex that's cut. Uh, it's just cheaper to buy that way in bulk because I'm doing uh, more than just one headlight. But any kind would work. Um, uh, even the foam, but like I said, I'd, I'd rather have the liquid because you see how the liquid pulls it down. It pulls everything away from the light. Uh, the spray kind of, um, I don't know, lifts it, should I say? which um, is, you know, you're still having a lot of material when you're wiping off the light. Uh, but anyways, clean microfiber towel. Always clean microfiber towels when you get to these steps. Why? Because when you're wiping off, you don't want to wipe on grease or wipe on dust and stuff like that because you're getting close to the finish uh, step. You want the finished product to be super sterile, super clean. As you see here, uh, it's dehydrating from that... Um, alcohol actually that is in all Windexes or all glass cleaners uh, they're really alcohol based um, and that's where the drying and evaporation comes from because alcohol has a higher evaporation uh, point than just regular water or liquid so anyways here is my um, 12 volt polisher uh, I'm getting ready to use this here with a 3M orange finesse pad. Uh, I haven't used this one here in a couple days, um, and it's rare. It's fairly new, so I hydrated it just now with uh, a little bit of water, and then I damped it off so it's not soaking wet with the um, towel. Uh, here I'm using a plastic lens polish. You want to, um, uh, you know, use a dime size dab of it. But you want to spread it all the way through the um, pad. And then see here, I'm using the dab method, uh, going back and forward, putting, um, you, know, you know, smashing and dabbing that material, which uh, dabs it into the headlight, uh, you know, the pore surface of the headlight, because it's really porous. If you were to look at this headlight at this stage uh, under a microscope, you would see that it's extremely porous. So uh, that's what's going on here is the headlight is soaking up in those pores a little bit of this polish, uh, which is like oil base. And um, it's also soaking it into the pad and just allowing it to spread evenly. So when you hit it with this high RPM, it's not flinging everywhere. So the dab method is a must, in my opinion. Um, a lot of, you know, places, a lot of uh, studies don't uh, say anything about the dab method, but it's very important. Um, it's also a time space to allow, once again, it to soak in both ways, to the pad and to the light. Um, this is kind of one of the reasons why uh, when people rub WD-40 or bug sprays or, you know, orange juice or grapefruit on their headline or whatever, it'll work. It'll look good for an hour or two. But once it dries up, your headlight's going to be even worse off because now it has that residual residue. So people, please do not use that on your headlight. No gimmicks, no no toothpaste, no nothing like that. Because once that stuff physically dries and tries to evaporate, it leaves behind uh, residue. And your headlight is just going to be worse. I've had to do people's headlights uh, that have done this, and it's just worse. It uh, leaves permanent damage. It's just not cool hire a professional or do it yourself watch these videos but anyways look at the clarity already partially this clarity is because of the steps that I have provided but uh, also um, this uh, drill here this is not a normal drill this is a 12 volt polisher uh, I'm using it at speed setting 7800 rpm so uh, with that and the polish it is producing a flash point a certain level of heat 
Um, this is where the professionalism comes in. You can do this, but you got to know how to move that drill. You can't leave it in one spot. You can't hit those corners certain ways because uh, it does get hot. There's a lot of heat I'm using here, which is providing this clarity. Uh, it's a flashpoint thing, and you got to know how to work it. And if you watch these videos, how, you know how I've been doing it, you, you can learn that easy. With that being said, uh, don't be intimidated to try it that way. Um, it's going to be the best way you can. Um, you know, it, you, it's common sense. You know, if you're just holding it in one area, you know, for 30 seconds, 20 seconds, you're going to burn something. But if you're constantly moving it, if you're just touching it to where uh, you're waiting for it to turn clear pretty much, that's fine. But if it turns clear and you're just going to go over that spot, 10 times and you're gonna sit it there for 27 seconds of course you're trying to mess up a headlight you gotta almost try to mess up a headlight with uh, these methods uh, a lot of people are scared of the dry sanding um, you're not gonna burn nothing trust me unless you want to also with this step uh, I haven't said too many times before but you really want to have a respirator uh, using uh, the spray silicons and the spray sealers um, it's very um, a health risk <laughs> yeah you'll you'll start breathing different if you do a headlight or two and, and don't use this um, it's a very fine particle of vapor um, so I'm using their 3m mask with the orange orange um, excuse me with a pink uh, respirator uh, which filters out uh, dust and vapor this is considered vapor the sanding is considered dust so the pink is a good one uh, but this stuff is pretty volatile right now I'm spraying it then I turn a fan on it to blow it away you don't want to suck this stuff in um, you know, and then once again, I'm using a UV coating, a spray can UV coating, which is superior than any kind of towelette or wipe on any kind of bottle pour on or whatever. Uh, this particular one is um, a lot of people are requested to know what this particular spray is. Uh, I don't like people getting caught up in. Um, the materials and this and that, uh, unless it's like, um, I don't know, maybe like a 3M type issue or whatever versus a Joe Schmo pad. Of course, you're going to go with the higher quality company. You're going to buy Nikes or you're going to buy Pro Wings. Okay, you're going to know which one is better. But anyways, this uh, particular sealant is a th um, Meguiar's uh, spray sealant. Um, I use other ones as well. Um, different ones do different things. Uh, I generally like the tip on the Meguiar's. I use the Meguiar's here on these videos because it's um, smaller and handheld and easier to uh, pretty much work with on these videos. Um, but I use other ones as well. There's literally about a dozen, if not more, different uh, spray coatings out there. Get on the internet and check them out. Some are um, different prices. Some are different sizes. Uh, Big Giant Can, one of the ones I use. Um, but they all pretty much are the same. Uh, this one is just a small can, so it's easy to use on these videos. But once again, check this out. Crystal clear clarity. Uh, there's only a certain level of headlight restoration that you know any headlight restoration can get to. Now you be the judge. <laughs> Please like and subscribe.